Hello and welcome to the panel at Dublin BIC. My name is Martin Murray and today on the panel at Dublin BIC I have Charlie Gleason, the founder and CEO of Zip Mobility. Zip Mobility is an, um, a scooter, uh, an electric scooter rental company uh, and we're going to talk about the whole issue of urban mobility and uh, transportation in the future and of course about uh, what, what um, Charlie's company Zip Mobility has to offer in regard to that. Charlie, you're very welcome. Thanks for having me on. So if I could begin by asking you, um, you know, clearly there's a lot of issues uh, there with urban mobility, even before we got into the whole pandemic thing. Um, can you give me an idea, why are electric scooters uh, re uh, for rent uh, possibly part of the solution for urban mobility going forward? Mm. Um, well, there's a few reasons for that, I suppose. Um, you know, we've got a few big problems in Ireland, and I suppose these problems are evident all over the world. Uh, the first one being congestion. You know, Ireland is, or Dublin City is one of the slowest city centres in the world. Um, you know, the, probably the top 10 slowest alongside countries like, you know, Mexico City and Rio de Janeiro. Uh, and then alongside that, um, you know, our carbon from a carbon emission standpoint, uh, we do quite poorly as well. Like we were, you know, voted the worst company in, or worst country in 2017 for their action against climate change. And um, so your carbon emissions and congestion, both of these problems really are caused by the last mile problem. Now, the last mile problem is kind of in this context is the difficulty of getting people, you know, to and from public transport links. But, you know, as well as that, any other journey between, you know, one and five kilometers. Um, so th this last mile problem is kind of because we don't have any you know, bike sharing, scooter sharing, or, you know, because we don't have scooter sharing, yes, we have bike sharing in Dublin and we've got the likes of Dublin bikes. Um, but I think e-scooters would be a perfect fit uh, to solve this last mile problem. So, for example, I can get a scooter to the bus stop, I can get on a bus, and then on the other side, I can get a scooter from the bus stop uh, to my workplace, if that makes sense, on my commute. Okay. Wow. That, that's, that's crazy that, uh, uh, you know, a relatively small city like Dublin, you're comparing it, comparing it with Rio de Janeiro in terms of how poor we are with our congestion. Uh, that, that's fairly shocking. And, it would, and also that we, we do so poorly on, on uh, carbon emissions change, um, which would suggest that the relevant authorities should be all over this. Um, is, is that what you see? Uh, no, uh, well, you know, I, I wouldn't say that they're not working on it, um, but it's been quite slow. So um, I suppose the argument is e-scooters aren't necessarily legal on public roads at the moment. Um, so there's an argument, there's a bit of a gray area as to whether they're classed as mechanically propelled vehicles or mechanically assisted vehicles. Now, in simple terms, a mechanically propelled vehicle uh, requires, you know, a license, insurance, tax needs to be registered. Um, and a mechanically assisted vehicle means it'll be classed the same as a bicycle. Now, generally speak, well, the Irish government is saying it's a mechanically propelled vehicle. In most other cities, you don't require a license uh, registration, well, registration sometimes, but a, a license definitely isn't a feature on electric scooters uh, around the globe. Um, so it's kind of a, a gray area and they're kind of not legal at the moment. Now, from the business perspective, um, we're kind of saying, okay, well, what can we do while we're um, while this grey area exists or while it's being ironed out? And what we're doing as a company is we are launching and scaling on university campuses. So this is, you know, it allows us to prove demand, prove safety, um, prove our unit economics, um, so that when the legislation does change, uh, we'll be in a good position to get um, be in a good position to secure licenses in these cities. Very good. Okay, so you see the university campuses as a really good uh, beachhead marketplace for you um, in, in a quite regulated environment. But if I could go back to the cities for a moment, in your view, what is the appropriate regulatory environment uh, to make um, scooters uh, a, a feasible and safe option uh, for travel? Should they be on the path? Should they be on the road? Uh, should people need licenses and insurance or not? Yeah. Should, uh, should helmets be a, a, a mandatory? Uh, what, yeah. what, what do you think are the rules and regulations that should be put in place? Okay, so there's a few questions there. So the first one was, uh, where should they ride? Definitely on the roads and the, and the cycle lanes, definitely not on the footpaths. There's been a lot of issues with that. Um, you know, Dublin footpaths and Irish footpaths in general are much narrower than that of our, our, you know, European cities or American cities where the footpaths might be three or four meters wide. We just don't have that in most places in Ireland. So they'll definitely need to be on the roads. And, and in terms of rules, 
very similar to bicycles. I think, yes, there might be a case where you need a driver's license to ride an electric scooter. There definitely needs to be a minimum wage. You shouldn't have 10 year olds going around on these things that can go 30 kilometers an hour. So whether that's, you know, 14 or 16, that's to be decided by the government. I think 14 would probably be okay. Compulsory helmets, um, you know, bicycles don't have compulsory helmets. It's, we would advise all users to wear a helmet at all times, but in practical terms, um, I'll give you an example for say Dublin bikes. If you're getting the 46A into Dublin City, um, you're not going to bring a helmet under your arm just in case you know you pop on a Dublin bike to go to a meeting. It's kind of impractical. So um, it it they should wear them, and they should there should be a service where they can uh, Dublin bikes provide them. We will definitely provide them uh, for everyone that signs up. They're they're um, eligible for a free helmet. They just need to press the button on the app and it gets sent to their address. Um, so that's something we definitely advise. But from a legislative standpoint, I don't see it, hap it happening. If you look at um, Paris, there's no legal requirement to wear helmets, although all the scooter operators will, will push for it. Uh, and it's the same in Germany. Germany were the most recent to change their legislation uh, and there was no requirement for helmets. They had things like, you know, all vehicles will be registered for the scooter sharing operators, just so, you know, they all have a, a unique identifier number and things like that. Um, so that's just a kind of tracking mechanism, but yeah, there's no, no legal requirement for helmets. Um, and then... And and does the technology also exist um, in order to do um, to control the speed and to control where the scooter can and can't go? Yeah, so our, our technology is quite advanced, which is great. Um, and what we, we can do is say for a university campus, we've plenty of people that would say, well, the universities, their biggest concern would be, well, what if someone just takes it off campus? And then, you know, we, we get in trouble because these scooters aren't permitted, you know, you know what I mean, on public roads. Uh, but we're, we're able to have a geofence around the campus, around the perimeter of the campus. So that means that when the scooter approaches the geofence, it approaches the perimeter of the campus, it will slow down, it will slow down, and it will start beeping. And before it reaches the perimeter, it will stop. Um, as well as that, we've got things like, um, you know, um, slow, slow, like slow, lower speed areas. So if you're going into an area with high density um, or a high footfall, um, it will slow down um, and it will, you know, it will change the maximum speed from say 15 kilometers an hour to five kilometers an hour in certain zones. There's also dismount zones where the scooter can only be wheeled um, and they won't actually work, you know. So uh, yes, yeah, plenty, plenty of things like that. Now our technology has the capabilities of doing that um, and, you know, the application will be based on the university or city that we're going into uh, and, and, you know, what they would like to see in, in the various areas. In an urban environment, what's an appropriate maximum speed for an, an electric scooter? Um, so, in, so if you look at the European market and the US market, it ranges from about 15 miles per hour, which I think is around 25 kilometers, uh, to around 30 kilometers. Now, on a university campus, we wouldn't have a, we'd lower our max speed straight off the bat because there's no need to be going, you know, through through say UCD at 30 kilometers an hour that needs to be closer to kind of 13 to 15 we're looking at 13 and so 13 kilometers an hour might bring around and bring about an average speed of say eight or nine or ten and um, does that make sense so just a little it bit does. lower than the maximum speed yeah Very so um, that's what we'd advise so tell me what is zip mobility going to do in this space in in the market yes yeah, so there's a few things that are happening at the moment. Um, COVID-19 has kind of put a few spanners in the works. We were planning to launch on university campuses, uh, and we still intend to do so, but our launch has been delayed because simply there's no students on campus. So it's, it's as simple as that. Um, so, our un so we've got our university business and our city business. Now, the university business has slowed down or has been you know, put out, but the city, uh, our city launches have actually been fast-tracked. So what's happened in the UK because of COVID-19 They've looked at what's happening in the, in the industry as a whole uh, of transportation. Public transport is around, uh, their capacity is reduced by about 90% in London. So 10% public transport uh, capacity. And then also, if you look at from a congestion perspective, car lanes are being given to widen footpaths and being given to cycle lanes. So it will actually lead to more congestion in the city. You know, you've got less car lanes, so more congestion, and you've got a reduction of uh, public transport capacity of 90%. So what that means is the only way people are going to be able to get around efficiently is bikes, electric bikes and electric scooters. Now, the government have acknowledged this. And what they've done is they've fast-tracked e-scooter legislation, which was supposed to be coming in in 2021. It's now actually happening at the start of June, so about two weeks' time or one week's time. Um, and also, they were supposed to have four electric scooter um, trials, so e-scooter rental trials uh, across the UK. 
and now they've lifted that limit. So instead of four, every city council um, throughout the UK that wants to issue e-scooter licenses can do so if they wish to do so. Um, so obviously there's massive opportunity in the UK market now and, and we're, kind of, we're kind of trying to raise funds on the back of that uh, and we're hiring people to, to uh, go at the UK market quite hard. Secure okay. Life. Very interesting. So I know uh, Enterprise Ireland is an investor in Zip Mobility, and you've just said that you're you're seeking to raise a round now. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Okay, because obviously there's there's quite a bit of uh, capital cost involved in acquiring the uh, the scooter hardware and uh, and so on. Yeah, well, it's 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 actually to be honest, th- our strategy right now isn't even it's not even hardware based. Yes, we have capital to you know launch on a university campus but the 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 funding we're raising at the moment is much more to put the team in place to have the resources to go for you know irish universities and uk cities at the same time it's a speed thing um and we need the resources to be able to do both um so that's where we're at right now yeah Okay. There are some very, very big names in this space, big and very well-funded names. I'm aware of, uh, you know, two big ones coming out of the US, Lime and Bird. Um, and I think they've they expanded quite quickly and they've had some setbacks as well, I think, in some cities. How will Zip Mobility, you know, a, 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 a much smaller operation currently than them, uh, compete against those uh, huge players? Yeah. So there's a... There's a few things there. You're absolutely right. There's plenty of well-funded, uh, you know, um, startups in the industry, and they are all startups. They're all kind of less than 24 months old, which is incredible. Seeing the kind of highs and lows they've experienced already. You've got Bird and Lime from the US. You've also got Tier, Cirque, Hive, Voy. The list goes on. Uh, all European guys. Um, so I suppose, yes. The first thing you said there was, you know, they've had a, they had a few difficulties. Um, they had a, you know. I'm not going to, you know, badmouth competitors, but generally in the industry, what's kind of happened is um, Bird and Lime, if I take those two as examples, they were able to scale into over 120 cities in 12 months. Now, the, the way they did that was through their gig economy charging model. Now, what that means is they employed independent contractors to go out to the scooters at night, take the scooters back to their house, charge them overnight and redistribute them the next day. Now, they were getting paid, you know, anywhere between five and $20 to do so. So if you just think from a unique economics perspective, it's, it's not very favorable. And um, so what it led to a huge cash burn. Some of these companies are, you know, making nearly half a billion losses a year, which is incredible for a company that's only two years old. Uh, and that's excluding the CapEx for the actual scooters. And I know anyway, I'll go into it. Um, but uh, what we're going to do is slightly different. We've got, um, we're kind of going for this slower and steadier approach. Now, it can, we can still scale at a very quick pace, but not into 120 cities in 12 months. And um, so what, the way we're doing that is we're using a centralized charging model uh, and we're using uh, swappable batteries as well. So what this means is instead of getting independent contractors to take scooters back to their house, charge them over the night and redistribute them the next day, what we'll do is we'll have a warehouse full of battery packs and we'll simply have warehouse, full-time warehouse staff to go out and swap the dead battery packs on the scooters and simply redistribute the scooters. So it's a lot more cost effective. I think the gross margin difference probably be around 50% uh, and things like that. So um, it's just a much more lean approach. Yes, it takes a little bit more resources, but yes, we'll absolutely be able to scale with that model as well. Very good. Okay, so uh, I see there's a clear difference in your uh, uh, between your business model and that of, of those big players you mentioned. Um, if I, as a consumer, am stepping onto a Zip Mobility scooter anytime uh, in the near future, either on a university campus or in a city, uh, what 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 uh, will I expect to have to pay for that? So it'll be on a university campus, probably around seventy five cent to unlock the scooter, and then twenty cent per minute thereafter. Now that's a little bit more expensive than our um, city model, which would be one euro to unlock the scooter and 15 cents per minute thereafter. But that's to account for shorter journey times on a university campus. Um, on, in a city campus, or sorry, in a city, um, the average journey will be, you know, probably two or three times the length of the journey on a university campus. So it's slightly different pricing models to, um, you know, account for slightly different uh, journey times. Okay. Very good. Uh, Charlie, uh, that's been really, really interesting talking to you about it. You know, even before the um, the the pandemic came in um, in our, you know, small city like Dublin, I've seen almost on a daily basis, it seems, the congestion increasing on footpaths, in cycle lanes, on roadways. 
um, and uh, people becoming more and more irate um, all the time about that congestion. Um, and you know, clearly the p pandemic is going to change this. As, as you've said, uh, more space is being given to pedestrians and cyclists at the moment, and that will make more space for scooters as well. So I'm, I'm, I'm really hoping that um, the, the, the pandemic accelerates a move to a much more sustainable um, uh, urban transportation regime and that uh, scooters are, are part of that. Um, and uh, I look forward to hearing more about what uh, Zip Mobility uh, does in this space. Absolutely, you'll be hearing from us very soon. Very good. Charlie, thanks a lot. Great, thanks, Mel Martin. Cheers.